He is a gorilla of destiny, a bullet club OG, continuing on the legacy of the most feared name in all of wrestling. From Tonga to Japan to America, you are now entering Tama's Island with your host, the baby face heel, Tama Tonga. Okay. Folks, it's Tuesday, it's November 2nd, it's 6.31 p.m. Eastern Time. It is time once again to talk all things that's been going on in the world of wrestling here on Tama's Island. I am your host uh, this week as Tama is traveling to, uh, he's, he's in the middle of a, a long house show tour with New Japan as they are on the road to power struggle at the moment. He is literally on the New Japan bus right now. So he's in the middle of traveling. So it's going to be me, the culture vulture, the folk city hustler, the disruptor, Ross W. Berman, the fourth holding things down on hosting duties. But I got a couple of folks from the island here to chop it up with me. First of all, of course, we've got John coming back to the podcast. Hey. John, how are you doing? Hey, thanks for you know being willing to uh, let me back up in here. You know? Absolutely. Oh no, yeah. you're always you're always welcome, John. You're always yeah, welcome. Yeah, and speak yeah. speaking of, let's also welcome on Gary. Gary, welcome back to the show. How you doing, buddy? Uh, couldn't be better. It's good to be back. Hell yeah, good to have you back. And we got we have a ton to talk about this week on Thomas Island because not only do we have power struggle coming up on Saturday, but there are also the semifinals of the uh, AEW. Or yes, the semifinals of the AEW World Title Eliminator Tour co tournament coming up in 24 hours. There's all kinds of stuff happening in the world of wrestling, and we. I mean, I feel like we have to start with the the big old elephant in the room right now, and that's Ring of Honor. I mean, that's the fact that uh, Ring of Honor, the longtime independent promotion, has announced that everyone on their uh, roster is either going to be when their contract comes up on December. Uh, are on at the end of December, everyone will be released. And then anyone whose contract runs longer than December is going to be paid through the end of March as ring of honor is going to be heading towards uh, a certain, a sort of hiatus. They are going to still broadcast, uh, uh, they, they're still going to broadcast final battle. They also have one more event coming up in November. I believe it's honor for all, uh, that is going to feature a bunch of surprising, uh, uh, new talent coming to Ring of Honor, but they're going to be going on a, a, a hiatus for a little bit to kind of dream it all up again and come back as, as a new promotion. It sounds like uh, the pandemic really hit them hard, having all of the empty arena tapings and then not necessarily coming back to the uh, attendance that they had before the empty arena tapings when they did finally get the the live crowds back. Uh, I mean, let's let's get the initial reactions before I start really really breaking down everything that's going on in this in this ring of honor story i mean gary what did you think when you heard the news that ring of honor was was going to be taking this hiatus and and coming back as as what sounds like a, a new company i mean they'll still be ring of honor but it's going to be it's going to be a very different vibe i feel like you know i haven't been really keeping up with ring of honor but i feel like they need this break you know mm -hmm. these you got this whole bunch of talent and uh and as you said the pandemic really hit them hard so they don't know like what to do since you know not a lot of people are coming to their shows mm -hmm. so i feel like they need this type of rebrand or whatever they got going on maybe mm -hmm. they can do what tna did like look what tna did with impact that yep. could that's a really that's a really good uh, a really good example because Impact really has had this resurgence over the past like month, especially since they've been focusing on their X division and they've been focusing on their women's, their knockouts division, which has always been kind of a standout. And Ring of Honor kind of doing a similar thing before heading into this, this kind of hiatus news. They're focusing on that pure division, which is kind of the X division for Ring of Honor. Let's let's face it. It's the, it's the division where they're like, this is what where you're going to see the stuff you can only see in Ring of Honor. And they were, had just started a, a 
a pretty damn good women's division. I mean, you had Trisha Dora, you had Roxy as the champion. The uh, storyline that they had with Ken, Quinn McKay going through the uh, through the the tournament was was gripping. Like they they have some pieces there, but it does seem that taking care of everyone during the pandemic and and really making sure that that talent was was kind of cared for and paid and all of that it hit them hard and uh, and they need to they need to kind of refigure out their the way their business uh works and it's it's an it's a noble it's not an end but it, it is a noble blow to take because they at the end of the day much like new japan or other companies they've just they have been keeping people paid they have been keeping these shows running even in the empty arenas and they they were the first ones to adopt kind of a bubble strategy they basically copied what the nba had done uh, for the return to the season when the COVID pandemic hit, uh, and we're mainly taping out of Baltimore. So there's, there it's, there's a lot of good intentions here. There's a lot of good pieces here. I'm, I'm hoping that in April, when they come back for super card of honor, they, they will be able to put all of these pieces and all this potential together. John, what'd you kind of think of the, the announcement? You know, um, it's a, it's a, first of all, dumping all that talent all at the same time is is kind of seems ins- insane on well, the surface. Let's let's not let's not call it dumping. Sorry, it's sorry. they're letting because because uh, re- it's uh, like they well they well somebody said it, I mean it's a release right I mean yeah, in, they're, in a way they're that their le- contracts are no longer but they're they're still getting to be they're fulfilled. still but they're still getting paid yes. they're still allowed to work other places and get yes. paid other places like the Briscoes are on GCW yes and so like I I don't even know if it's it's necessarily uh you know it's not like oh, a black okay, it's not way. like Hold the Black on. Friday where yeah, WWE yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. hey let's, let's screw you way. all put it this way. go off, sit at home for ninety off, days temporarily offloading uh yeah. yeah let me let me work on my corporate there you go uh, my corporate there you go. Uh, lingo uh Get well it. they temporarily offload some of their financial burdens and and mm-hmm. oh no it was not even because they're paying them so i don't even know so it can't they're, be, they're, not really even money they're burden. playing bore on the floor they're you gonna play nice. a game of you bore on the nice. floor and figure out who's who's they're, gonna go they're letting them um, go and do their thing for a little bit while yeah. they're not doing their thing and that's fine they acknowledge the fact that even if you if somebody stayed off tv and you pay them for three years they're still not going to be as as lucrative or or you know, even, um, you know, it's not good for their career, right? Yeah. Because we know that out of sight, out of mind. So they're yeah. well aware that if we let them temporarily go and, you know, do their do their thing, and then hopefully they come back and still want to hang out because they'll have to sign new contracts. Something gives me the vibe here that Sinclair has been doing, you know, they they own ROH for, you know, anybody yeah. or whatever. So they're doing their thing. And I think that people high up that maybe don't know the product, don't know wrestling, Remember, mm-hmm. these people own news stations. They, they, they own freaking everything, right? Mm-hmm. And what's what's happening is I think they see AEW, they see the new impact, and they go, how come, you know, how do we get us one of them? Yeah. You know, our, our product is not necessarily that. Not that it's it's better or worse, but production, you know, mm-hmm. as far as production well, and, goes and everything else. And even Joe Koff just said in a recent interview, we missed an opportunity with Cody and the Bucks and Kenny. He even he even congratulated Tony Khan and and the Elite for essentially seeing the opportunity in the North American market that he feels Sinclair and Ring of Honor missed. Yeah, and I and I think that I think that this is just their chance to do that. Um, I don't know a lot about the specifics of their contracts, but I will tell you that it's much better to say you're going to pay people uh, than than to not yeah. pay exactly people during a pause like this because. So, so there's some contracts where it says it's your problem. They can mm-hmm. even pause your contract yeah. and, you know, and, and they're allowed to do other stuff, right? Exactly. And that's, it does seem that not only are they allowed to do other stuff, but it does seem ring of honor is, is washing any hands that washes the hands of their talent. Cause like the Briscoes are a good example of this. They went over to GCW, won the GCW tag titles, created a big bit of buzz not only for the briscoes but for ring of honor i mean people were talking about what does this mean for hammerstein Mm -hmm. um and so now it has been announced that at the honor for all uh show that is going to air in november the briscoes are going to defend those gcw titles gcw tag titles in ring of honor against effie and AJ Gray, two of the members of the Second Gear crew. And so now you're seeing guys like AJ Gray and Effie make their Ring of Honor debut. If they if they have wrestled Ring of Honor and I just missed it, I'm sorry. But for as far as I know, this is their Ring of Honor debuts. And it does lead that idea of how much, how involved could GCW talent get in the future Ring of Honor? Because let's face it, if you really want to be on the pulse of independent wrestling like Ring of Honor is supposed to be, as they've always been advertised since they started in 2002, 
that GCW audience, that GCW crowd, I mean, hell, just Brett Lauderdale in general, that feels like the kind of pulse you would want to be on, especially if you need to come back with a ton of buzz. And especially since GCW is running in ROH's home field. I mean, the, the Hammerstein Ballroom is one of the, the uh, arenas where ROH has taped many a, a notable event. It's also the home of ECW. I mean, the, there really is a, a torch being passed, and so I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there is there is something so there is something to quote uh, to to quote uh, Dewey Cox there is something happening here what it is is not quite apparent but there's something happening yeah, um, and I think uh, the other interesting thing is could they be setting up mm-hmm. to essentially just be a show that other promotions exhibit on mm-hmm. right exactly Reg- regardless of their level of mm-hmm. of uh, tele you know television appearance. Um, doesn't have to be Impact, doesn't have to be AW, doesn't need, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. It could be GCW. It could even be somebody, like an entirely tiny promotion that has no TV deal, has no streaming, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, like Anchorage, Alaska Wrestling, uh, you know. Yep. Maybe. Wrestle, re, I mean, Wrestle Pro does, is the, what runs Alaska these days, I believe. Yeah, but right. yeah, no, but you're not. <laughs> you're not wrong, especially if, if rumors are true and Ring of Honor is going to be coming back in what is being described as an independent mode. So you're not going to get these exclusive contracts. It's just going to be who's available, these tapings. All right, those are our roster, this, these tapings. Uh, which sounds a lot like another company that's going to be coming to Sinclair-owned properties, Women of Wrestling. Because, and this is... This is a point that has been kind of muddled in the wake of the Ring of Honor announcement, because it has always been known that Sinclair was probably going to get some of these wa- these women of wrestling shows, because Sinclair has a, an agreement with Viacom CBS that, hey, anything you want to syndicate, we will syndicate it for you. That's Sinclair's bread and butter, our reruns and local news. And so they get their reruns a lot of times from CBS Viacom. And so it was always known that women of wrestling was going to to be popping up on Sinclair properties. But then once Ring of Honor was put into this state of flux and people start seeing visions of of WCW announcing we're going to go on a hiatus and we're going to come back with a big bang and that never ended up uh, 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 happening, it it feels like it feels like it's made people start going, well, how, how come women of wrestling is now going to be popping up on Sinclair if Sinclair is apparently in flux with the wrestling business as it, as it uh as it feels at the moment. I, I do have to I do have to clear up that timeline though. It was known before Ring of Honor was ever in flux, WoW was probably going to be coming to some, if not all, Sinclair stations based on the nature of their deal with CBS and Viacom. I mean it's also only appearing to be in flux. Yeah. And this could be incredibly controlled chaos because doing this, this press release, all this last minute stuff, obviously it's a big risk because yeah. you could get some of your big talent like like um uh, like STP, right? Or, mm-hmm. or, or any of them, they could go, oh, great. And then go get picked up by somebody who says, well, you can't go and be on ROH now. And now, you know, so now they're starting with kind of, you know, a new, new faces and stuff, which is mm-hmm. fine, but they've got some big, they got some big folks over there that are, that are, have a huge fan base and it's very risky. And I don't think they're going to take that kind of risk if they, if they don't see a profit. In mm-hmm. it. If, well, and- if they're going to fold, they would fold. It's not like, they're not going to say, you know what I'm saying? I think I don't yeah. know if they're as in, as in flux to them, at least as it seems to everyone else on the outside. Well, and, and the timing is very interesting because it's it comes at a point when AEW's roster is as big as it's been. I mean, like I really don't know how many people AEW could actually fit on their roster at the moment. Uh, and it's also a point when WWE has essentially said, "Hey, we're not really in." the pro wrestling business anymore we're looking for some brawn breakers yeah we're looking for some some more some more members of the samoan dynasty we're looking for former football players we're looking for your von wagoners uh and so i i feel like a lot of this talent will have an opportunity to impact i feel like a lot of this talent will have opportunities in mlw new japan I mean, they always had opportunities in New Japan by the nature of the partnership, but more so now they can, you know, be heavily featured on New Japan Strong. But I don't, I don't see a lot of these guys going off and and becoming. I, I, maybe there are a few of them because I know some of them have been talking to other companies in the wake of in in the build up to this, and I know that there I've I've talked to some in the company who sound in very good spirits. So it's I don't know if Ring of if it's really any doom and gloom over in ring of honor at the moment but i don't i don't know if they're necessarily in risk of losing people the way they were 
like one or two years ago when NXT was signing everyone and AEW was signing everyone and and all you know it it's a different uh it's a different era. I mean, what do you think, Gary? Is there is there any room on the AEW roster for for any Ring of Honor talent? I honestly think right now, me personally, no, because I mean they're just signing people left and right, mm. and they're just they got all of this talent that they're signing and they're just thinking like, Oh, what am I supposed to do with all these guys now that I have them signed? Like, mm -hmm. is there a spot for you? Like, mm. no, it's, I think you bring up a good point. Cause it's, it's like if, if, and this is going to sound so ghoulish and so cynical, but it's business. So it, everything ends up ghoulish and cynical and it's still, it's still technically close enough to Halloween for this. But at the end of the day, if you present the WWE releases as like a buffet for AEW to eat, they have barely gotten through the WWE releases. Like they're just now getting to your Bobby Fishes. They're just now like getting Tony Nese. Like they, there are still so many people from the WWE releases they're getting through that like to add this extra portion on their plate, like. It they, kinda, made, it, they made a rookie it, mistake, man. They went for the crab legs. They went for all the, you know, the big stuff. They went for the yep. roast, but they didn't realize there was some bomb ass sides in there that, yep. you know, that, and, and now they're sitting there like, oh, I don't know. I, I a little much, full. Oh, I'm no. a little full. And now there's oh, garlic man. green beans look so good. Oh, my God. Roosh just went by. Oh, no. Oh, man. Dra the Dragon Lee might be available. Like, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of real good talent that like they might be just a little bit just and i'm not it, it it's entirely possible that they could pull it out but it just it feels they are a little a little stuffed at the moment and so i i feel like it's very probable that come april of 2022 ring of honor has a i'm not going to say all of them but a lot of the people available that they had and i'm not saying those people are going to be sitting at home they're going to do stuff the independent scene is wild right now i mean gcw is is popping off God, the, hell, the American Wolves are tag champions in pro wrestling or in uh, wrestling revolver. I think is is the company. Like anything's possible right now, but I I don't I I'm not ready to say Ring of Honor's closing. I'm not ready to call it the the WCW Big Bang. I as cynical as I am, I'm kind of optimistic about their chances of coming back, especially if they can learn to play nice with the uh, with the independent scene. Which, let's face it, Ring of Honor has always pretty much played nice with the independent scene. A couple exclusive contracts, be damned. Like they, they have they 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 were the ones that put Tony freaking Deppin on people's TVs. So like I can't I can't say the independent scene's mad at Ring of Honor. Uh, it, but it's it's definitely going to be a very very interesting situation. And I I'm kind of I'm excited for. Uh, Honor for all. I'm excited for final battle simply because a lot of the the people on this roster are guys that are not they're not gonna phone it in because of this news. They're gonna use this as an audition. I mean, like you got let me let me pull it up. If I'm not mistaken, Bandito's taking on Alex Zane at some point. Like those are two guys that are gonna go absolutely nuts in the ring. And so I I I think it's I think it's gonna be. I think they're going to make the best of this. I re I really do, and I think that I think they're going to come back stronger because of it. Because the the pro wrestling landscape has shifted to you know to make it sound big and monumental. It has really shifted to the point where you 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 can't really be in that middle space that Ring of Honor was in. You know, like Impact has always been very good because they have access TV. You know exactly what channel they're on. MLW has Vice that has been a big boost to them, but Impact, but Ring of Honor has always been the check your local affiliates, which is very, it's very 80s. It's very like find out where, you know, superstars are. And so I think this has been a long time coming and I hope, I hope this, this does work out for them. Uh, yeah. I even, I even said it in happy hour. I'll say it on the podcast. If the NWA can survive the 2000s, any company can survive anything because really the NWA spent all of the 2000s as a company that had a belt and three letters every now and then they would have the wild side promotion going on but they were not you know they were not at the top of a lot of people's list they were they were struggling real hard and now they're back they're on fight they have pay-per-views they sold out the uh that St. Louis ballroom that they were in and so like they 
if they can do it, anyone can do it. And I think there's, a, there's just too many people at ring of honor that want to see it succeed for it to, to, to fail like that. And if you, and if you pay people on, on contracts that are only part of appearance, right. Mm -hmm. Appearance by appearance or performance contracts, then you don't have to worry about a bloated budget. You don't have to worry about taking care of people, which is not necessarily great, but theoretically, if there are other promotions, mm -hmm. then they're taking well, care, you know, being taken care of. And that's, that seems to be the kind of point of them going full independent in April yeah. of like, it's not, it's, I mean, it'll, it'll probably be like working contracts or working agreements, but it's not going to be full blown contracts that keep you from working other places. And so, I mean, it's not a bad idea. I, I mean, they yeah, see how like, all these crossovers are the highest ratings for AEW and impact. And you here's know. the thing. Here's the thing. I don't think it will mean a lot of AEW stuff because guys like Moxley and guys like Jericho, they can't like they can't work North American TV. Like we know that's part of the the contract. That's why they keep showing up in the Tokyo Dome because they can't do new. They can't work anywhere else in North America. But I think it will be very good for the people on independent wrestling TV. For the people of, like I said, GCW, your Limitlesses, your Prestige Wrestlings, any independent that has some buzz. There is no reason why their top few folks couldn't end up on a Ring of Honor taping based on the way it sounds like their business is going to be structured. So I, I'm very optimistic for what that what that could mean. Um, but like I just said, I, I mentioned independent wrestling TV. They had a hell of a weekend this weekend because they got to they were they had the privilege. I'm going to put this real nice. They had the privilege of having at Sushi Onita presenting the first ever true blue explosion death match in North America. There have been many who have tried to imitate it, but this time Onita flew not only the explosives, but he flew every piece of equipment needed down to the screws, down to the screws, John and Gary, down to the screws. He but flew the them from Japan, from Japan to New Jersey, fought Matt Tremont, blew up Matt Tremont, lit Matt Tremont on fire. And I, I gotta say, as someone who spent the better part of, I think it was either March or April bemoaning the AEW explosion match and, oh, how could you promise explosions and not deliver explosions? Their safety is not my concern. I finally got what I was looking for. I finally got something that made me terrified and made me go oh god get that guy to the hospital before the burns get infected john you watched uh you watched onita versus tremont what'd you think of this uh it was nuts what'd uh, you think first of all being from new jersey i'm, I'm proud as hell mm -hmm. uh second of all it wasn't the first we had one uh fourth of july uh 1998 <laughs> okay uh, just so you guys know uh it was a very small there was only like six people there Okay. Uh, and uh, we definitely set off some fireworks in a backyard wrestling ring. So, <laughs> uh, and and uh, and they all went off when only one of them was supposed to go off. I consider that an explosion. I'm. But, uh, we'll get to it. I'm 90% sure that's what happened in this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, keep but, going. But in all seriousness, um, I mean that you know that happened. But yep. But getting back to the actual for real, like people give a shit about the middle. Was that was a baseball? It was a baseball uh, stadium, right? Yeah, it was a it was a baseball stadium in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, it's, Such it, a dangerous, explosive, <laughs> fucking thing. They had to put it in the middle of a baseball stadium. This That's was crazy. Well, it, it was a match that needed a venue because when they announced it, they were like the yeah, location. That, that, that venue had to be five hundred feet from the nearest person. That's how yeah, big of an explosion they, it was. Well, they because they had they had a date october 31st they had onita and tremont and then every poster was location to be determined tickets to be determined like it was all tba until uh not long ago but uh yeah no it was in a baseball park in new jersey if you ever watched the uh the famous wrestling documentary card subject to change it's the baseball stadium that shows up in that documentary an explosive when, uh, documentary Followed uh, up by an explosive death, uh, death match. Yep, no, it's 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 a it's a good documentary, but it was a better death match. Uh, because <laughs> my God, so like I said, the dude had uh, all of his blood on the outside after that match. Yes, yes, no, it was it was a bloody bloody affair. Because not only did Onita and Tremont bring explosions, they brought light tubes, and then they brought exploding light tubes. They had bundles of light tubes that exploded with fire when they hit someone. Just a, a real big match go boom kind of a, a kind of time. Those are the I giant road flares basically. Like, <laughs> like how the hell did they do that? 
As someone who grew up on Jackass, it was really <laughs> everything I wanted I wanted to see. Because again, let me bring this up. Tremont gets knocked out of the ring into a giant explosion that is then followed up by, I kid you not, it had to be about two to three minutes of fireworks going off. Just Roman candles and bottle rockets and Saturn missiles just uh, going off for like three minutes, two minutes in, a guy in a fireman outfit like tries to put them out and it doesn't work. And so he just he just kind of backs off. If you ever want and, to feel more more useless, it's be a fireman next to a fire somebody meant to set. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, he had, he had his little fire extinguisher. <laughs> like, I don't think I'm supposed to put all these out. But I, that's why I said. Is that I, interference? Is that is that like, is that inter, does that count as interference? It's no DQ, so it doesn't matter. Oh, all right. Uh, right. Yeah, but. I don't uh, want to know if he gets the assist on a record, on the record. Like, you know, is the fireman, if, if he wins, yeah. you know. But there is, and shout out to uh, to uh, Thomas Island subscriber Scott, who was there. He met Onita. He sent, it seemed like he had a hell of a time. But yeah, they had a, a just like a mid show fireworks display. Then Onita got back into the ring, took some more punishment. They lit a a, a barbed wire covered board on fire, but they used what appeared to be an oil based uh, lighter fluid as opposed to an alcohol based lighter fluid. And if anyone watched the XPW Dark Side of the Ring. You will know that they explain that alcohol based lighter fluid just burns right off real quick and then you get land on it and it, you put it out. Oil based uh, lighter fluid just keeps burning. And so when Tremont got thrown into the uh, fire, the fire stayed burning and then caught Tremont's singlet on fire. You, you very loudly hear ringside attendants yell, put him out, put him out. Onita covers him. One, two, three. They hug, Onita gets the mic and goes on a rant about how hardcore Tremont, it was really a beautiful, a beautiful moment, especially for a guy like, uh, like Matt Tremont, who grew up a deathmatch fan and is now a, he's now a bona fide deathmatch legend. I mean, especially I, after that match with Onita. I hope he's, I hope he's watching live from the hospital and I, and I hope he gets well soon. I, I hope he went to the hospital. That is not uh, a job for urgent. I, mean, I saw a tweet. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if how legit it was, but that, uh. That he went to the hospital afterwards, which you have to. Yeah, he no, should anyway. he, I mean, after he should. Death, he was he yeah, was yeah. on fire. He should have gone to the hospital. But yeah. wrestlers are wrestlers, and so I. That's why I always say that's not we a talked job. Talked for... last week when we were yeah, talking no. last week. It's like there are there are some jobs for urgent care, and there are some jobs for the emergency room, and that was absolutely an emergency room uh, yeah. uh, or, finish. Or if you shout don't know out... what you're doing, you just go back to your hotel room and make that all bloody. Oh, shout out to shout out to former GCW champion uh, uh, Matt Cardona, but uh, no, it it is a good it is a good point because Tremont put himself through hell literally for this match. Like I said, outside of outside of the 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 six person match show that that you mentioned, not a lot of American Deathmatch wrestlers can claim to have have done the things, especially with Onita that Tremont has has now done. It's a big. It's a big, big match. A shout out to everyone at, at H2O that uh, that made that happen. It sounded like a, a hell of a time. Gary, what did you kind of think of the 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 Onita Tremont? Uh, uh, I don't even know what to, it was. An inferno. Let's go with inferno. Just, just like you said, I actually got what I wanted from this death yes. match. Yes, thank you. I wasn't expecting all of that to happen. Yep. Freaking exploding light bulb, like yep. Where was this? Even even the hardcore like deathmatch folks were like exploding light tubes. Oh, this is next level. Like they really they really pulled out all the stops. But I'm I'm glad I'm glad you brought up that point. We got what we wanted again. I this is a point that I've brought up a lot of times, and I it's not up to the fans to make wrestling promoters responsible. You know what I mean? Like we can, we can tell wrestling promoters to be responsible for people's safety, but at the end of the day, it's up to wrestling promoters and the wrestlers involved to determine where the line is. I don't know where everyone has a different line, but it feels like with, with Onita Tremont, they walked right up to that line. They stared up over the edge and they gave us a hell of a show. And I, I, I got to salute them. It, it's, it's no different than a guy like Shibata headbutting himself uh, to, for, for our entertainment. Like these, these guys are really, they're, they're putting their, their bodies on the line in a way that a, a lot of previous generations of wrestlers just, just didn't. And so I, I have to salute that. I really do. I, I know that I know it's not everyone's taste and we'll, we'll, we'll move on to more traditional pro wrestling in a second, but I do, I do have to salute what Onita and Tremont did in that ballpark in Trenton. It was, it was a, 
it was a historic moment and I cannot wait for the documentary. I'm sure there will be one because there was there was very much a camera that was not that was not be, like there was one camera that you could see on the the uh, uh, hard cam that like we never saw an angle from. And so I'm 90 percent sure that's like documentary video package, whatever. I'm excited yeah, to see what that is. Something like that. Please document the behind yep. the scenes. Please. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Especially Absolutely. bringing a guy like Onita to America, I need I need every step involved from him get it from him getting off the on the plane in Japan to him getting on the plane in America. Going through you know customs what I mean? with explosives, I'd love to know that. <laughs> I thank you. You bring up a fantastic point. I need to know everything about how they I shipped mean, everything over. It's legal. It's legal. It's legal. It you is. just have to go through a lot of red tape. <laughs> and it sounds like they did, or you know, maybe they didn't. I don't know. Show me the documentary so I can I can find out. Uh, if it's incriminating, wait like 25 years, then show us the documentary. <laughs> no one will give a fuck. Um, well, you know, if Dark Side of the Ring taught us anything, just because something incriminating is talked about in a documentary doesn't mean there'll be any actual legal repercussions. Oh, exactly. There, exactly. There are yeah. it that that's uh, that is that is the way of the world. Sometimes that's too dark. Should we get to traditional wrestling? I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> let's actually, move. That was actually spot on. Right. No, it was it was, was it was it was it was dark but poignant. It was very poignant. Uh, it was like it was like my thing about Crown Jewel. Hey, Tom is not here. Ago. I got I got to do the deep dive. Ex- yeah, no, time. someone someone's got to. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, like I like I said, I just got a crown put on my teeth. Uh, say say hello to this one. What did we decide? This one's Xavier Woods, that's, and this yep. one's Selena Vega. Selena. Yep. Yeah, with Selena. <laughs> They don't feel like teeth, but they work like teeth, so they're good enough for me. Let's move on to Xavier Woods and Zelina Vega, because we're officially about a week or so into their reigns as king and queen of WWE. And it's a tale of two monarchs, really, because Xavier Woods, benevolent uh, babyface champion, a, a ruler that everyone seems proud of, does not seem to be overstepping with his uh his his right hand man kofi kingston you know they have a very Literally the hands they did the game of thrones thing yep. and gave him the pin yep no exactly exactly and so that's Roach, I'm, whatever it's called yeah and so I'm, I'm very excited to see what's happening there but zelina vega uh kind of kind of kind of going the alternate route going the uh i uh you are all peons to me in the in the the uh who 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 else did that king corbin did that king uh King Bennett did that, or King Barrett, Bad News Barrett, did that. Uh, it's a more traditional route, frankly, that Zel- Zelina Vega is taking. But what I'm going to throw to you, Gary, first. What do you kind of think of the king and queen of WWE right now? Uh, how and whatever you may think of their reign. This is America. You can you can say what you want to about kings and queens. <laughs> I feel like for Xavier, this is like his dream. He's always wanted to be king of the ring, and I'm yep. glad he got that moment to like experience. Now, as for Zelina, I really didn't give a fuck because I mean, she's <laughs> yeah. just she's just throwing her well, power around the whole. Like, come on, man! And it's and it's not your fault. It's not like WWE treated the tournament she won like it mattered. Like they, it was just filler. It was it was what Bruce Pritchard calls on his podcast a let me up. And so, like, I I don't really. It, it was it was like two minutes. It was it was it was, break of the show. It was a bathroom is, break. Is, is that like a Pritchard? Is the Pritchard thing like? Uh... I'm about to invalidate any chances I ever have working uh, anywhere. Uh, <laughs> is that like you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain type situation? Uh, I I don't know. From what I understand, from from what I understand from various stories and other people, Bruce Pritchard has not changed. If that makes any sense, sure. Uh, just people's perception of him has changed. <laughs> I understand. Uh, so, uh, uh, but back back to back to King of the Ring. I think that's interesting. The Zelina thing. I actually would have preferred the other way, and maybe there's still time. Uh, I, if if Woods got the crown, see if Woods got the crown, and then went, oh, "Fuck you, everybody! I'm the fucking king now!" <laughs> like that would have been fucking. Boss. I think we'd. Like, st- I think we'd still cheer him. Quite frankly, like I think it would be like would cheer for him. Yeah. When, when Corbin be... first went heel, people yep. cheered him. People fucking yep. loved it. And then when he started doing the, you know, all the other shit, it, it got it got weird. But you know, everybody was cool with it. So I mean, same thing. And then if Selena got it, and she's like, you know what? I could I could change things around here. I feel good about this. I would have preferred I would have preferred a little bit of that, but they went they went predictable, which is fine. Sometimes you give people what they expect because it it makes them well, feel good to get what they you know makes you feel smart. I mean, not all the time though. No, like, not all the time. This shit coming from a mile away. Yeah. Well, and, and last and let's let's be real. Last time Zelina tried to change things, it didn't go very well for her. So <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe she maybe she's decided to rule for a little bit. But no, I I. I like I, I'm I'm with you both. I think the Zelina Vegas stuff 
it gives her something to do, but it's not quite hooking me. But with Xavier Woods, like it feels like King of the Ring as is as important to him as Big E being champion. You know what I mean? Like Kofi got his WWE title, Big E got his WWE title. Woods, I maybe maybe he's always wanted to be WWE champion. I don't know, but it really does feel like this King of the Ring is like this is the thing he's gonna hang his hat on for the rest of his life, you know? Like this is the thing that he really has he's wanted. This is the culmination of years of work. I mean, this is this is his Daniel Bryan moment as far as I'm concerned. And I'm 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 interested to see cuz especially like you said, they went a little Game of Thrones by making Kofi Kingston the hand. So I'm I'm wondering if there is going to be this slow burn where eventually power corrupts Xavier Woods cuz I'm with you. It would have been it would have been fun for him to come out and be like, "I'm king now, fuck y'all." But it also I also feel like as someone who spent all of today talking about the importance of, of emotional and narrative climaxes in stories, I feel like we need this victory lap for Woods to really yeah. let let especially since now that WWE's touring again, he gets to have the victory lap in one city, then he gets to go to another city and they can have the victory lap with him, then he goes to another city, they can have the victory lap with him. And then when they're done with that tour, turn him heel, make power of corrupted him and do the whole tour all over again. You know, like they, they have to and think that's, bigger. That's, that's they the have new to day bigger. brand, right? I mean, yeah. you, you, you dare to, you dare to dream and you live, you live your the best life and you're happy uh, about it. Right. I actually, I just saw something in the chat that I want to bring up because they do bring uh, shout out to Lenny Banner in the chat who brought up a very good point. We have King Woods mm -hmm. and we have the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Does it not feel natural for these two? Even, and I hate to say this because oh, I'd, I mean, I'd love to see. I'd love to see him win. But wouldn't it be great if if we got Roman Reigns versus Xavier Woods? I'm I'm yeah, they, I'm okay they, with Roman winning that. But it would it would be beautiful. Yeah, they already had the Usos uh, step up to yeah. them. So I mean, it's they're they're laying the there, seeds. There is some there's something yeah. there. And and uh, especially with the kind of Game of Thrones ish reference with the uh, you know the hand and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It feels it feels like we're gonna look at some kind of uh, power struggle, or something. I, you know what? I love to see <laughs> this, it. Th this th is th you know. <laughs> this is so WWE though, because like when Game of Thrones was on and Game of Thrones was hot, <laughs> WWE couldn't do a Game of Thrones storyline to save their life. They tried to make Seth Rollins the Kingslayer. They tried to make the Demon King. Like they they were really working so hard to get some Game of Thrones heat when Game of Thrones was on. Now Game of Thrones is deader than any show has ever been. It aired its finale and people immediately stopped talking about it. It just disappeared. And yet now WWE is able to actually get us to the point where we're like, yeah, maybe Roman Reigns is the Cal Drogo. Maybe, maybe they do have a, a king on an iron throne. May, maybe WWE is Game of Thrones now. And it's, like, it's just so WWE that they finally get it right. Like yeah. what? Four or five years Plus, after it's over. It's a big company. It takes them a long time to yep. get these scripts through, you know? And, and, <laughs> and like, you know, this was something somebody pitched like, you know, six years ago. <laughs> yep. And uh, it's just making it through the system. It's a big, and then when big that, company. And then when that person got fired, they were going through their desk, they dusted yeah. it off and realized, hey, this isn't bad and just took it. No, it's like, that's J. J. how R. Hollywood Martin, J. R. R. Martin as a, uh, no, what I J.R.R. J. R. R. Martin. Martin. <laughs> kill me listen <laughs> hey been... look um we're gonna give your we're gonna give his twitter handle at the end the, ner <laughs> the, the nerds can come for you i'm not oh, touching God, that i one. love it i love nothing more than standing my ground when i say some dumb shit and acting like i was right the whole time oh lord i'm saying he's been go he's been ghost writing wwe for the past uh 10 years while well, he was and that's why he hasn't finished uh game mm -hmm. of thrones of whatever the new book is winds of of winter i think is winds it, of, it yeah. would make sense because they keep saying winter is coming so the last book <laughs> should be winter but i don't i again yeah. i i watched i watched two seasons and that's about it so i'm not yeah. i'm not the game of thrones expert i don't i don't know about the the loter or the lord of the rings i'm not i I'm just starting Dune. I watched the movie and then was like, screw it. I'm going to read the book. Finally, I, I'm slow to read. Um, but yeah, it, it does. It does feel like it will be it will be an inevitable collision. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Ring of Honor. We've been talking a lot about WWE. I want to throw in one quick AEW thing because there's really not a ton to talk like they're doing the Eliminator Tournament. Danielson and Kingston had a hell of a match. But uh, this Wednesday, they're going to be doing John Moxley versus Orange Cassidy. And so I really just want to do a quick, like, who do you think is going to win? Gary, Orange Cassidy or John Moxley? 
I'm gonna have to go with Orange Cassidy. I mean, like, ooh, really? I'm just throwing, just throwing that out there. I like, no, I like it. I, I, I love I, for seeing him to shock everybody and him yeah. pick up the win against Mark. Ew, ew, oh, you make a real good. I'm, I'll, I'll get to why you make a good point, John Moxley, Orange Cassidy. Who you got? I'm a, I'm a, a more of a pessimist, so I'm just gonna say Mox. Okay, okay. I, um, I, uh, I gotta go with Gary. Well. Wow. Oh, I want to go with Gary on this one. Simply <laughs> I like how because... you brought Gary in just so you could disagree with me. <laughs> no, no, but here's the, I, I, that was not why I brought in. We'll no, get to I'm why not. I brought Gary in. Cause we <laughs> got to talk, we got to talk switchblade. We got to talk house of torture. And he is, he's one of the men, one of the men for that, the but no expert. <laughs> he brings up a very good point. If orange Cassidy beats Moxley, I think it would do more for this like pissed off, like slide that Moxley has been on than it would for Moxley to go out there and face Brian Danielson. You know what I mean? Like Brian, they, the AEW doesn't need a reason to book Brian Danielson versus John Moxley. That is a main event that they can pull out whenever they need to. And so if you have Orange Cassidy beat John Moxley, John Moxley gets to get pissed off, and so he's still continuing this really violent story that he has been on, and it gives him a reason to maybe start hating some of the people that AEW fans love because they love Orange Orange Cassidy and they you know and they're 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 salty on John Moxley, but it would also mean that we would likely get Brian Danielson versus Orange Cassidy as the finals of that AEW World Title eliminator tournament and that just sounds like a fucking fun match pardon my french like orange cassidy versus especially this brian danielson take my money i will i will fly to minneapolis i will fly to minneapolis for that match and especially since it's not the main event of full gear so it can be it doesn't need to be the big fireworks birthday cake violence fest that that moxley versus danielson would be and orange cassidy versus Brian Daniels, I don't, that just feels, I, it just, it makes my heart happy. You know, it makes my, it, it makes something sing in my soul. Maybe I'm completely crazy. I don't sleep a lot because of the New Japan schedule. Gary, what do you think of the idea of Brian Danielson versus Orange Cassidy? I feel like that'd be a good, you know, fresh match. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not, okay. I'm going to, not going to say like, we haven't seen, brian versus mox because you know they were two different people but still yep. i'd yep. still love to see something like fresh and new so that would yep. be great and it's like and, and again like i said especially since aew doesn't need they don't need to use this tournament to book brian danielson versus moxley they can they can really pull that match out whenever i i'm with you give them a little bit more time mox has already figured out who mox is Brian Danielson has really gotten he's he's getting back to that American Dragon vibe, but he's only been back like a month, not even like barely just over a month. And so, like, I don't I don't know, maybe give them a little bit more time to develop who they are as uh, as as AEW characters. Gary just went dark. Well, well, Gary figures that out. John, tell me, am I crazy or am I on to something with with Mox versus Orange Cassidy? Or am I am I just am I just trying to make this complicated? Why not both? <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that's that's fair. Uh, you know, honestly, um man, I don't I don't know if if the thing about I'll get back to like to what like Orange Cassidy and Mox. The thing that makes it interesting is that they're almost they're almost polar opposites, right? Yes. I mean, you got obviously gimmicks entirely mirrored i mean entirely different folks mm. is it is it possible uh because i don't know a lot about orange cassidy pre aw to be honest i didn't follow him yeah. or anything um is is mox gonna like do something to like just like shake the, the 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 beast out of him is this is this is this possible that they're trying like you know that he's done this this you know subdued gimmick so long that that they are trying to find somebody to awaken something in his character or what well it, it without without get it without spoiling too much of orange cassidy's past there is a certain fire in orange yeah. cassidy no, he's I mean, always I've seen, I've seen where he kind of like does you know he kind of gets fired up but i'm just mean is there 
do you think that do you think that this is just like they're building to something or is this just... i look if i i if if i'm if i'm gonna if, if we're gonna play both sides of this and i i'm i'm gonna get down off of my my soapbox about how good brian danielson versus orange cassidy would be i i really do think this is just a chance for mox to get very violent with someone that aew fans care about like we, oh, okay. we see he's gonna we saw him puppy, so to speak yeah because like we saw yeah. him beat the shit out of the guy from uh dark order uh uh preston dark order 10 and so like he is definitely getting violent and he is getting mean it's just a question of whether that meanness and that violence is what's going to take him to the finals or if that meanness and violence is what's going to you know maybe waylay him because it, you're it can be a strength it can also be a weakness it's going to be uh uh it, it's it's going to be interesting to see because i i do think that danielson versus mox is it feels like where this is going and it feels it feels right it'll probably be great especially since brian danielson beat kingston mox is going to want revenge over him beating up his best friend and so it does make a lot of sense, but man, there is that thing in the back of my head, and maybe I don't know. Maybe it's the the go the voice of Vince McMahon speaking to me from twenty years of watching WWE. But there is part of me that's like, man, that that Orange Cassidy surprise could be huge. It could be something big. That could be some uh, that, some good shit. Exactly, exactly. It could be some very very good shit, and especially like I said, especially as a, as a kind of surprise, because like the way we're talking about it. Mox Danielson is the inevitable conclusion. All of the fans are ready for Mox Danielson. But imagine that, like, that just childlike joy that would happen if we found out that, nope, it's actually going to be Danielson versus Orange Cassidy. And if, hell, if Orange Cassidy can beat Mox, he, he can probably beat Danielson. Like, it's it's two different types of violence, but it does make, it, it's not like that Orange like Cassidy. That could be a little more fun, because I think Danielson could kind of play more during that i know mox you know mox does the mocking thing i know he like put his hands in his pockets whatever but i think but i think danielson could do that could do a little bit more with orange cassidy i think it would be a better match i don't disagree yep. i just don't know you know which way it's yeah. gonna go. no and i just i i had to bring up that point because if it you know by 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 next week we will know what the match is and we won't be able to to entertain our imaginations the way we do sometimes on this show uh but let's move on because AEW, while they have a huge show on November 13th, New Japan also has a big show on November 13th. They're going to be coming to San Jose, to the San Jose Civic, the site of Jushin Thunder Lager's final match in the United States. Uh, a beautiful venue, if I do say so myself. For Battle in the Valley, the card is shaping up to be a hell of a time. You've got, uh, hang on, let me, let me pull up the card right now because I, I still have the Ring of Honor information uh, pulled up. But it's the, uh, you've got stuff like Yu Yu Omura taking on former, unfortunately former Impact champion Josh Alexander. You've got, uh, you, you got uh, Ren Narita taking on Will Osprey. You got a main event of Jay White taking on Tomohiro Ishii for Jay White's never open weight championship. And this isn't just about the championship, it's about like who represents the never division. Because Jay White has been the Never Champion for a good few months now. He beat Hiroshi, or yeah, he beat Hiroshi Tanahashi for the title. So it is not exactly like he he beat some small potatoes to get it either. He's on a damn fine reign in a new era for the Never uh, title. Because originally the Never title was kind of hidden under the shadow of the IWGP Intercontinental Belt, but that belt is no more. And so now you're finding that guys like Jay White, guys like Hiroshi Tanahashi are coming to the Never Division. And folks like Tomohiro Ishii, who have been getting the shit kicked out of him and kicking the shit out of others for that title since pretty much since its inception uh, in the early 2010s, he feels he's more the face of the division than Jay White is. And they are, they're going to... They're going to battle for it. it I, it's not official yet, but it does sound like Jay White is, is pretty much saying that if Ishii doesn't win, he just shouldn't be challenging for that belt anymore. Like, he's got to give up the ghost. Uh, there's, yeah, it's been... Their, their back and forth on New Japan Strong has been very, very interesting. If you're not catching New Japan Strong on, uh, uh, on New Japan World every Saturday at 8 p.m., you're missing out some interesting stuff. It's, real, it's really getting some fire under the, these Battle in the Valley shows. But... Gary, 
I know you're biased because you're a Jay White fan. Very biased. But, oh, yeah, no, but I <laughs> I think we need someone to champion Jay White right now because he's mean, still... At least one person. Yeah, no, because he's still... Look, I... A lot of times I find myself doing a lot of peacemaker stuff because, you know, everyone in Bullet Club does tend to, to, to talk. You know, Jay White will say that he's in charge and then Tama will say you got to prove it. And there's been there's been I a lot of Bone Soldier. That's what I heard. And Bones. Yeah. No, and Tama said that Bone Soldier is in charge. It's It's been there's been a lot of back and forth. But as as someone that has watched Jay White since he came back from excursion, I've always I've always been I've always been a big supporter of him. I think he's got oh, I think he's got a lot of potential and all of this this bullet club stuff has kind of has kind of clouded that. So I need I need a I need someone flying that Jay White banner to pull me out of the clouds. Gary, tell me about Jay White as never champion. And just in general, I mean, do you feel he's got a case here for being the face of the never division? I feel like ever since he beat Tanahashi for that belt, I feel like he's elevating that championship to like greater heights. Now, I'm not gonna knock Ishii like he he's he wasn't a great never champ, but I mean Jay has just been killing it lately with that championship, hmm. you know. And uh I don't want to say this because you know it's happened before, but this stipulation where if Ishii loses, he can't challenge for that, like. WWE booking got me scared because oh well they make I don't that lose that's still that's still not official it's it's it right now I I'll if that changes I'll update y'all but it, it's more Jay White that that's the case Jay White has been making it's not quite New Japan management saying that yet but it's been Jay White saying that if you don't beat me for this title and I still have this title I'm just not letting you challenge because like it's gonna be my title it's gonna be my choice. Um, it, it doesn't sound quite as, it's not like WWE or like with AEW with Cody where they're like, you've lost and now you're never going to be world champion. Um, it, it does, yeah, it does sound no like authority when he says that it's not like Jay White can. Make no, but, but, and here's, again, I have to be, I have to be the center line here. I have to be the middle way. The champion does have authority, some authority, especially in new Japan where they do seem to just let people say, yeah, I'm the champion. I will take that challenge. Or in the case of Okada. I don't want a briefcase. Give me a belt. And so they give him a belt. I New Japan. I mean if, if, if Jay Golden. White loses it to the next person, then mm-hmm. Ishii could still. Ishii could still challenge. Yeah. Still no, challenge absolutely. Else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that's the whole that, thing with Drew in, uh, when, when Bobby yep. was champion, it was the same thing with Drew. Yes, exactly. It's, yeah. it's. They it's always very, they always make sure there's a parachute out of that because you know they might want to book it in the future. There's always there's always a little, you know, a little escape hatch. Look, so, strong does strong doesn't have a money in the bank briefcase yet. So let's 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 hold off on let's 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 stop clutching our pearls and just no. enjoy the fact that like Ishii and White always have a good match. So it's going to be a hell of a main event. But John, what do you what do you kind of think of Jay White's now, case now as I the know, I, know, I know Gary's going to think this is because I got beef with Jay White. Uh, I just, I got good feeling about Tomohiro Ishii. Um, it's that it's all he's got to do is just get him in that, that brain buster, you mm-hmm. know, all he's got to do is just, it's just one. I don't know. I, I mean, J, if J way's got the power, hey, J way can't all do it. it takes is one. I'm going to say, one. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's like, it's like 50, 50, but, but I'm going to, but, and not just because, and not just because somebody else said J white, I'm, but I'm going to say Ishii, uh, Tomohiro Ishii is like the one who could do it. And, and I think it's it's interesting if he does because it would be it would be nice to see uh to see chaos with that with that belt especially if stuff's happening here more you know um just for some variety a little bit stateside and um and and also uh i just pulled up his profile really quick because i wanted i wanted to check something we're both uh blood type o so i Mm -hmm. feel like i feel like we i feel like we got a brotherhood you know what i mean we're basically related See so. that that is the kind of storytelling New Japan is on the forefront of letting us know the wrestler's blood type so that we can we can actually know that you know what I could give him a kidney if I needed to. Now now I'm scared he's listening in one day he's like, "Hey man, uh I need an organ." I'm like, "No, got to go." It's like, "I remember you on that podcast and you said you would just uh. ju- just be happy that Ishii is the one with blood type O instead of Jay White cuz he's got a switchblade." Uh he's got a full knife. But, he's got but, but honestly, wake up in a bathtub of ice. I think I think if Jay White loses, it's going to be an embarrassment for him like it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be fucking hard because yeah, I, because if he loses to him 
I know, I know you disagree. It's okay. You're allowed. That's no, 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 no. I said I agree. Oh, you so agree? I, oh, oh yeah. my God. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. we, we don't yeah. got that much time to get into it. I feel um, like it's gonna go down that path he did with Wrestle I uh, Wrestle Kingdom with Ibushi. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the, and the other thing is, it's gonna be. It's that it has if Ishi if Ishi's gonna be Jay White, it has to be brutal. He can't just beat him by going in there and going, okay, let's scrap a little bit, let's throw each other what? around, you know, mm-hmm. let's just chill. Like it's it can't he can't go in there casually. He's gonna have to decimate him in the first like but, few minutes. Say, hang on though, saying that Ishii is gonna have to win his fight by decimation is like saying Bret Hart is gonna have to wrestle by working someone's limb. Like that's just Ishii does, whether he likes uh, but you that's, or but, and you, that's why I got but that's why go I'm in there and, the odds. But that's why fair. I'm giving him the odds. That's Fair, why I'm the odds. Uh, uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily a strategy as much as just that's what he does. Like okay. that's how. Let, he... let me put it this way. Then that's that's how he's going to win. <laughs> but no, I I think you both bring up very good points. I think it really does come down to what the future of the Never Belt is going to be because I think they both have a good case. Ishii, as long as Shibata isn't wrestling, Ishii is absolutely the face of the Never Division of old. He is the guy who you most associate with that open weight belt. But Gary brings up a very good point that the Never Belt has been elevated over the past year. Because let's look at the past few champions. Shingo Takagi, current world champion. Hiroshi Tanahashi, ace of the company. Jay White, a kid that people very much are behind. Like, you cannot look at Jay White's career and be like, I don't know how they feel about him. They clearly they clearly think that that kid is going to be uh, the future of this company. And so I think, I think if Ishii wins, the never belt goes back to being what it was, the ass kicker, tough man, fight him belt. And if, if Jay White wins, it means that that belt really is going to be the new intercontinental belt. It really is going to be the new belt that is there to main event when they don't have a world title match the, the, uh, when they need to, they need to, you know, space out the world title matches, so to speak. Do you think, do you think Osprey has bad blood or like Ishii has like bad blood? after the whole chaos uh, abandonment deal. Oh, absolutely. I can promise you Ishii has bad blood with Osprey. Do you think do you think if Ishii grabs that strap, he's going to get try to get attention? I mean, there's going to be some like some heat on him from uh from Osprey, from Osprey. And, and crew. I yeah. I I don't know cuz I don't see TJP running into the I mean, open I mean, weight I division. Mean, I mean, none of them are going to do it. <laughs> I just mean like do you think it's going to pull? I'm just saying, do you think it's going to pull aggro? Oh well, everything pulls aggro from Will Osprey. He's Will Osprey, like he's in That's that true. he's in that Conor McGregor phase. Where like every <laughs> no matter what happens, he's gonna come out and he's gonna say some he's gonna say some shit and stir some shit up. Uh, so I, I think if I think if Jay White wins, Osprey's gonna run his mouth. I think if Ishii wins, Osprey's gonna run his mouth. That's it's twenty twenty one. That's what Osprey does right now. Uh, he he he's also going to be in a tag match at at Battle in the Valley. He's teaming with TJP to, if I am not mistaken, hang on, I just I just lost the page. There it is. Yeah, he's going to be taking uh he oh no he's not he's not going to be teaming up with TJP. Like I said, he's going to be taking on Young Lion Ren Narita because that's what Will Osprey has been doing. He's been facing either former Young Lions like Carl Fredericks and Coughlin and Connors and those guys, or he's been facing I know Ren Narita also former Young Lions. So he's just he's just picking on the new kids instead of actually defending this world title that he says is his and he is the real champion make claim to he wasn't in the g1 didn't defend the belt and so that's why i say he does just kind of run his mouth right now that's that's i mean he kind of has a good point for that like nobody beat him for that title so i mean I'm not saying I'm not saying he doesn't I'm not saying he doesn't have a case. I'm just saying that Shingo Takagi came this close to winning the G1 while holding the belt, beat Tanahashi in the dome, uh, has done a whole basically been carrying New Japan on its back while they deal with clouds that have to clap and kind of half uh, empty arenas. They're finally lifting the state of emergency, and so they're the shows are about to get a little bit more raucous, but it just, I mean, hell, and now that you've got Okada running around with the IWGP belt that everyone wants to see, it it does feel like that as legitimate as Osprey's claim might be, he's third man on the totem pole right now. He's not really, well, he's just wanna, not. We want to see it because we want to know how to open it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we want to see how they got that. <laughs> we, I'm telling we you, figure out how the contract's in Sharpie on the back. I'm telling you. I would not be surprised. I, I would not be surprised if Okada has a contract like sewn within the sewn within the fabric, like like people used to sew their jewels into their pea coats or something like that. Like he's got he's got a contract in there somewhere. 
But yeah, let's talk about that IWGP Heavyweight Championship. The version for a belt that everyone knows and everyone loves is back in IWGP Challenge certificate form <laughs> because Okada asked for it and they gave it to him. Don't laugh because, hey, Tama Tong is going to be fighting for that bad boy on Saturday morning, September 6th at Power Struggle. He's already beaten Okada once. Now he's going he's gonna to be taking him on. He beat him clean. So now Tom, he's going to be Tom is not here. So I can finally tell you guys what I think what's going to happen. Yeah. What Tom, do you think? So? I, I think Tom was going to win. And now, and now people know I feel that way. And it's not yep. because Tom is here. See what I'm saying? You, you exactly. Know, no, we call that, we that, call it a swerve in the biz. You know that is, saying? that is exactly how you, that is how you maintain objectivity is you make sure. <laughs> so uh, no, that's but, what keeping but, but, kayfabe is all about. <laughs> November 6th. Yes. I'm sorry. My brain is, uh, my brain yeah. is fried. I've been watching a lot of wrestling and I'm still, I'm still living on Japan time, baby. Um, but it's the power struggle card is stacked. It's looking like, uh, based on, based on the way the state of emergency is going, the crowds are going to get a little bit louder. They're going to get a little bit fuller now that all that's been lifted and Japan is, is finally at the point where they have record low, uh, positive cases. Shout out to everyone in Japan that has done a, a good job to, uh, uh, getting, getting the pandemic under control, but yeah, Okada versus Tama for the IWGP heavyweight belt and all that it represents. Cause while it is not, well, it's not the heavyweight championship. It is the, it, it does symbolize the G1 climax winner. It does, uh, it, it is as important as the briefcase and hell it's as important as the original IWGP title was shout out to Chris Charlton at NJPW, the NJPW English language team who pointed out that the original IWGP title was just the belt that they gave to whoever won at some points it was called the G1. At some points it was called the MSG League. At some points it was called the IWGP League. But if you won the big round robin tournament, you got the belt until the next big round robin tournament. And it seems that uh, what's old is new again. Okada has kind of returned us to that uh, to that tradition. Gary, what do you kind of think of it? Because like I said, Tom's already beaten Okada once. It's very possible that by this time next week when Tom is on the podcast, he has that IWGP version four belt could he is he gonna bring it on the podcast he brought iron fingers so i would assume <laughs> I, I wanted to try to bring it, it right yeah. there like like we got we got to do like a national treasure <laughs> oh god it's gonna be like zoolander it's we're gonna be hammering the <laughs> fucking title trying to figure out how to it's in the title um sorry you but, go ahead i'm sorry no it's just, fine so but gary yeah, what do you think what do you think of this this match who do you think's gonna win what do you think uh what just there's What's just, on your mind? There's no question. I'm obviously rooting for Tama. Yeah. Because he's beaten Okada once, and Okada's just like, oh, hey. That's and when, I guess. I mean, uh, he's and like let's, brushing him off like Tama didn't just whoop his ass. Clean. And this is what I'm saying. Because, like, last time Okada, like, asked New Japan for something, he was like, give me the King of Pro Wrestling tournament. I want to do this this weird stipulation thing. And he didn't even win it. It ended up going to Toru Yano, who, outside of a couple folks, has pretty much been the king of pro wrestling ever since. And now I'm I'm starting to wonder, especially with how listless Okada has been kind of backstage and in, in the matches, if he is kind of maybe taking this IWGP belt ab about as seriously. Because it's like we said, Tama beat him clean, and he also watched Evil kind of cut through a lot of the competition by, as he said, going back to Bullet Club's roots. And so if there's ever a point where Tama might start feeling desperate in this match, he can pull out the old school shenanigans. He can, you know, you can get those dick kicks. You can get some interference. It's it, it, There are no rules when you're in Bullet Club, technically. And so, like, Okada's really got to, he's got to be on his game. He's got to be on his tiptoes for this match, or else he's going to get knocked off the, he's going to get knocked off the mountain. I mean, what do you think? Am, am I crazy, John? What do you think? No, I think, I mean... <sighs> Again, yes, you're crazy. Oh no, I'm uh, absolutely a crazy but, but person. But what correct. I'm saying, <laughs> but you're also correct. Yeah, you know, um, you know, all all I know is I'm a sim I'm a sim I'm a simple man. Uh, I just want to see him. I just want to see him whoop his ass again. Yeah. The, Thomas has been proven the whole time. I mean, people people talk about you know his tag team work, and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, God, brilliant as shit, fucking fantastic. Um, but his singles, his singles, shit's fucking good. Yeah. And 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 I think he I think that he's proven time and time. And I think he's been keeping it a little bit 
you know, inside like this, 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 I don't want to call it a rage. Let's call it a fire, you know? And, mm. uh, and he's been, he's been keeping it hot, keeping it warm. And now it's, he's just going to go in there like a freight train. I'm not expecting yep. it to be easy work for Tama, but I'm expecting no. it to be clean work. Well, yeah. And that's it. I, and we, we can say this because Tama's not on the podcast right now, yeah, but yeah, see? no, he, he had to fight to beat Okada. He still beat Okada and I still think he can do it again, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend it was, you know, an yeah. easy day at the park. Uh, no, no Okada match is even, even, even the young lions don't have an easy time, you know? Um, and so it does kind of, it, I, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to write Tama out. And in fact, the way new Japan has been going, especially with guys like Okada, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see that belt around his waist come this time next week. But Tama's not the only one fighting for about a belt of power struggle. Cause like I said, the state of emergency has been lifted. And so there's nine matches on power struggle. We've already been talking for an hour, so I'm not going to I'm not going to make us do like a giant giant deep dive into into all of these matches, but let's talk about some of these title matches. Gary, you're wearing the House of Torture shirt, so this is a good place to start. The open weight six-man tag champs Yoshihashi, Tomohiro Ishii, Hiroki Goto, the most dominant champs in the history of the belts are going to be taking on Sho Yujiro Takahashi and Evil I am, as anyone who has listened to this podcast and been to the Happy Hours knows, I am a, a firm, loyal member, if not a leader of the Yoshiyahashi Respect Army. I believe that he is one of, I think, especially in this current run that he has had with Chaos uh, as n- never openweight champion, he's never been better. I think Ishii and, and Goto have been more inspired by having him, and I think they are a damn good tandem, but... I think House of Torture is winning this one. Like they have been on a tear, especially now that they're pissed off that Evil didn't win the G one. I mean, what what do you think, Gary? Do you think uh, it feels like they're going to get vicious? Especially they got show. I feel like now, now is the time, since they've do- they've done this before. I feel like now that they have show, like they can find a way to win somehow, some way. So I gotta go with them. I gotta yeah. go with Torture. Again, like show especially, all of his matches are ending by ref stoppage. He's just choking people out with that modified uh, triangle choke. Like he's really, he's a new kind of vicious. Evil has always been vicious, but he's he's been more so uh, during the G one. And Yujiro Takahashi's got that new move, big juice that he used to beat Kota freaking Ibushi. So it's it's a pretty stacked team that, that Chaos is gonna have to be taken on. I don't know, John. What do you what do you think? House of Torture or Chaos? Man, I feel like Chaos could really use this one. Uh, really? No. <laughs> I was gonna say like they've been. This is the other part where I'm like I'm the Yoshihashi respect guy, but like they have been champs for over a year. <laughs> They they've beaten oh, everyone. Yeah, they, they got to maintain it. What else they got? Yeah, but without it, what do they got? It, it, without the without it, they have the chase, which like as as many people will tell you, the chase is just as important. But uh, no, like I'm I'm kind of uh, with like I think I think it's I think it's I think it's time for the house of chaos to fall and the house of torture to rise. Like I don't yeah, know. Let me call this. Let me call this one down the middle. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say <laughs> time uh, limit I'm gonna draw. Say the tie. I'm, they're, they're gonna merge. Uh, <laughs> oh my god there you go house of torture merging with the what is yeah, left tor- of chaos the, the torture of chaos uh is it, what they're gonna it, call themselves. it's not the craziest thing i've heard because chaos is barely a faction at this point like i would even, love to be i would love to be right ross I anytime just, anytime they need more than eight people in, in, anytime they do a, like a bigger than eight man tag match chaos has to team with main unit because they just they don't have the numbers anymore so I, I I wouldn't be surprised if they join hands. I um, I'm with Gary though. I think I think they're going to win it. We have an amateur wrestling match that's going to be taking place between Toriano and Great Okan. I believe unless the Kiss My Foot match has like taken a giant lead over the past like 72 hours. I think it's going to be the amateur rules match that Yano uh, wanted against Great Okan. Great Okan so far the best threat to the uh, King of Pro Wrestling 2021 trophy since the Rumble. I mean, don't get me wrong. No offense to Chase Owens. He had a lot of help on the fact that he had the the, uh, the uh, an entire Rumble to win that that title from. I think he did a good job with it. But man, I think I Great Ocon has been real dominant, and they it does seem that uh, it does seem that New Japan New Japan likes this guy. I'm gonna throw it at John first. What do you think? You got Yano or you got Great Ocon? I'm, you know, I'm going Yano. 
Yeah, he's the he he is he's sneaky. If anyone I, can do but, it, but, but mostly not of not for any reason other than I just I just think he's rad. You know, yes. Uh, and and you're not and, wrong. And he's fun. You know, and I just yeah. every once in a while you just like the you just like the little bit. Of, you know, you like Look, fun. Er- Everyone is talking about NFTs these days. They love New Japan's fighting oh, no. king of pro wrestling, Toro Yano. That's what they're talking about. When you hear the NFT craze, they're talking about New Japan's fighting king of pro wrestling, Wait, is Toro he an Yano. NFT now? Is that is that his new is that his new thing? No, that's that he that's he's the NFT craze that everyone's been talking about. Their oh, NFTs yeah, yeah, aren't yeah. real. They're just Toro Yano. That's what I'm trying. <laughs> that was the joke I was trying <laughs> yeah, to make. Sorry, John. no, I got you now. I'm sorry um it's fine thought, it's because i know he's it's enterprising done. like he had the curry and now he's got the no, NFT. And, that's what i in, thought in was... fact it's because of the fact that there hasn't been a yano nft yet that's why i'm like hesitant on it because i'm like well if that grifter hasn't gotten into it how curry's not a grift curry's a, 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 a legitimate business no curry's a legitimate business but curry with your face on it <laughs> is a different story altogether it's the it's, implication it... of, of 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 putting somebody's face on a food product that always gets me Exactly. Like, like, um, like, what flavor is this? Oh, Toro Yano. Yano. Yeah, it's it's Yano flavored. That is what I think every time I see it. I'm like, oh, this tastes like Yano. It smells like which, Yano. Which which <laughs> is which is great. If that's what he smells like, good for him. You know. Delicious. Yeah. No. I'm, it, I I actually I did read a review that the curry is actually very good. I Shout out. I, I think it was uh, over at Fan Fight. They do they do fun coverage like that of wrestling. I think they reviewed the Toro Yano. Uh, Curries. What do you think, uh, Gary? Yano or Okan? Who do you see pulling it out? It pains me to say this, but I think Yano's going to win again. Really? Hey, really? This, huh? All right. You would never hear those words come out of my mouth ever again. I I can't believe that there's three of us, and I'm the one saying I don't know if Tori Yano's got it this time. Man, you're, just not eat, you're not eating the curry. Is the thing. I'm not. I, I'm not eating the curry right now. I'm not. I'm not drinking the Kool Aid. I'm not yeah, eating exactly. the curry. Yeah. I am pretty much. I, I'm. I kind of think that Great Ocon being the next king of pro wrestling because it's it's November. There aren't going to be a ton of opportunities between now, especially it with Con in it. So it's, well, and especially with the uh, knee slapper, especially with the World Tag League Best of Super Juniors tournament that's going to be taking up most of November and December. There's not a ton of places for uh okan to defend it he would he would probably get one more defense and then he would be the one to get the king of pro wrestling 2021 trophy it's just provisional until the end of the year and if great okan isn't going to be never open weight champion because hiroshi tanahashi beat him for that belt if he's not going to be one of the younger g1 climax winners king of pro wrestling would be a pretty damn good thing to to hang his hat on uh i don't know i i um, uh, like I said, I'm I'm the one in the Okan camp for this one, but we'll see because those amateur wrestling rules could benefit Yano, especially if he bleaches the hair, brings out that most violent player uh, persona. But uh, speaking speaking of violence, El Desperado is mad as hell because not only not only did Robbie Eagles take the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, but on the road to Power Struggle, he also took the IWGP Junior Tag Team Championships from him, beating Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado with the help of Tiger Mask. And so now El Desperado, when this match was booked it was champion versus champion now he's taken on a double champ and he it seems like especially heading into best of super juniors he's got a lot to prove i'm gonna throw it to you gary first who do you, you got robbie eagles you got el desperado i got robbie eagles yeah i got robbie that makes it it would make a lot of sense I, I, I say that because i feel like they might be pushing for desperado to win best of super juniors this year okay so i feel like they could do that I, you know, I, I, I am kind of getting that vibe too. It feels like if, if he's not going to be a winner, he's at the very least a favorite right now as we head into it. I think it would make sense for him to win it. Hell, I think it would have made sense for him to win last year's, but I get it. Hiromu was back. Hiromu was better than ever. And so they had to, they had to do what they had to do. But I also think it makes a lot of sense for Robbie Eagles to get that big win heading into the tournament. So that way it's, it's not a new junior tournament, not a new junior heavyweight champion that, everyone's chasing they're chasing the guy who's been the guy for you know uh, a few months now and so that i think that i think that would do a lot to solidify his reign if he's running through best of super juniors as the guy to beat uh what do you think john what do you think uh el desperado or robbie eagles i'm trying to do my homework here and i'm really trying to look and see you know do the tail of the tape uh robbie eagles blood types not on his profile okay so it's really hard for me to say 
Uh, and and El, and El Desperado, not your blood type, I'm guessing. No, so uh, okay. Just, over an abundance of caution, though, I'm gonna go with Desperado because okay, because he because you because you, know, you, you at least know who the devil he you could, know. Yeah, exactly. The blood type you know is better than the blood type you don't. Oh um, no, wait, no, his says unknown, but at least oh, it's, but at least it's there. But I'm going El Desperado. That means he got some he's, super soldier <laughs> shit. He's got, he's got some he's, super soldier shit. He's got mystery blood. Oh yeah. my God, El Desperado is Weapon X. This is gonna Hell be wild. Yeah. All right, done. It's a done deal. <laughs> also, I don't want to put over Robbie Eagles on the Tom on Thomas Island. No, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I know. I Thomas, know. I'm Thomas probably gonna be the back. guy to do that. He's gonna come say. back. I'm gonna get a talking to. I know that. Listen, but I. You know, it's I, my I, job to read the tea leaves, and so I'll <laughs> read the tea leaves, even if it means I get a smack upside the head for saying that I think Robbie Eagles has got this. Now, if you were taking out a Bullet Club guy, I'd be more scared. But it's, yeah, it's actually Tom had some nice stuff to say about Robbie Eagles last time. Exactly. He yeah. he he did, but at the same time, I also I also know that Robbie Eagles has done what he's done, and uh, he, he is persona <laughs> he's persona non grata amongst uh, uh. the BC, the House of Torture, and all of the other uh, uh, groups that exist within BC Incorporated. Yeah. Um, I can't trust somebody who hides their blood type. See, because because <laughs> Desperado is like unknown, which means like they did the blood test and it came up like just badass or whatever. And then Robbie Eagles was like, "Oh no, no, you don't do my blood." Type. I was like, "All right." Right. Which is, hey, you know, whatever. It's uh, and I get as someone as someone who doesn't want to do twenty three and me because I don't want someone else to have my genetics. I get it, Robbie. <laughs> I I absolutely understand it. Um, but also, uh, I'm I don't know. I'm just rooting for him. Now, the next match on this list I know is going to be a heated debate. IWGP United States Championship match: Hiroshi Tanahashi defending against Kenta. I am not saying this because it's the Bullet Club podcast. I am not saying this because uh, of, of any kind of, you know, other reason than just the run he has been on since really the pandemic started and he got stranded in North America. I think Kenta should win this one. I, I'm going to throw to you guys too, but I, I really got to say, I think Kenta has made a damn fine case for being the king of america especially if that if new japan strong means that he's gonna have a lot of chances to come back over to north america and, and wrestle and kind of prove that he is the the champion that he's always been that he was in noah and that uh he that wwe just never seemed to to you know want him to be what do you i again this one your boys gary so i i think i know how you're gonna i know how you're gonna go for this one but what do, what do you think Kenta deserves this title, man. I mean, he's been chasing this title for God knows how long. Mm -hmm. And I'll forever say this. He should have beat he should have beat Moxley for that title. I I'm kind of with you. He should have beat I, if it weren't an empty arena match that they had, I would be 100 percent on that. I get wanting to change the belt in front of fans. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of with you, man. Like he should have. He should have beaten Moxley. He should he he should have been an IWGP United States champion by now, especially with the way he was running around with that US briefcase uh last that was year. The I mean perfect opportunity for he him. just he has he has something on social he has that spark on social media that you hate to see go unrewarded. And I I hate to make a title match with Hiroshi Tanahashi not sound like a reward in and of itself, but that's a very WWE mindset of hey, at least you get to come to the dance, kid. So like I want I kinda want Ken to, to win this one. What do you think, John? Yeah, I mean I'd hate to make it a uh you know unanimous thing, but yeah, I got to go Lil K. Sometimes uh, it is. Like, sometimes yeah. it just... And you know what? If Hiroshi Tanahashi battles back but against all three of us thinking that Kenta's going to do it, that's a very Hiroshi Tanahashi <laughs> thing to do. So I can't fault him for it, but I'm with you. This is Thomas yeah. freaking island, and all three of us agree. And, Kenta, and, and, and Kenta should a, be... It's on a hot streak here. I mean, exactly. it's like... It's, it's like, man, it would, be, it would be stupid to say no because there's no reason to assume... He can't the, do it. The only the only reason I could see Tanahashi winning that belt is it feels like there is a Tanahashi Moxley confrontation looming. They they, teased, could, they could do that shit on their own time. Oh no, right? and I get that. That <laughs> yeah, and here's bro. the thing. They <laughs> they teased it at resurgence because Mox was ringside for or was front row for Archer versus Tanahashi. Yeah. And and Mox is straight out called out Tanahashi. I yeah, don't that, think that doesn't need a title. Attached that doesn't to need it. a title. Yeah, it's a big deal. And while I'm with you, 
but yeah, I know that the, there's the, probably the, an anxiety the, about not having a title attached. Well, to no, it's, it's not about the anxiety of not having a title. It's about the story that they've been telling because it's always been about this. This Tanahashi Moxley thing has been about the United States title. Tanahashi, when, well, when Tanahashi. Well, going to have to get it from back in Kenta first. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but again, I, I can't, I can't go on the rant I did today about narrative, uh, about, know. you know, narrative yeah. climaxes and, you know, a narrative tonic chord. If I didn't bring up the fact that the whole reason Moxley is, is pissed off is because he wanted revenge against Lance Archer because Lance Archer beat him for the United States title. Hiroshi Tanahashi robbed him of that vengeance. And so while that is, that could be personal enough to make the match. What I really think would would cement that story is if they actually fought over the belt that Moxley was trying to get. Because it's not it's not like it was a personal issue between Archer and Moxley. It was a title issue that Hiroshi Tanahashi got in the middle of. And so now it's either going to be up to Tanahashi to prove that he deserved to be in the middle of that, or it's up to Tanahashi to prove that not only could he have beaten Archer, but he could have beaten the guy who beat Archer. So by the transitive property, he could have beaten Archer. And so there is that there is that theater school dropout playwright in me that's like, look, they need to have this title match. I as much as again, like I said, I think it needs to be Kenta. I think Kenta would have a great run in hell. It doesn't he doesn't have to he doesn't have to hold the belt for eight years and, you know, become the Italian American hero like uh, Bruno San Martino. I'm just simply saying that 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 the spark that he has cultivated with the wrestling fan base needs to be rewarded somehow, some way. And this feels like a very, very good way to do it. We already talked Tama Tonga versus Kazuchika Okada. I think we're all very much in the camp that Tama Tonga should be walking out of power struggle with that IWGP belt. Not only because this is Tama's Island, but to shake shit up. I love chaos. And quite frankly, chaos has not provided enough chaos. So maybe it's time for Bullet Club to make that chaos. But I, the I main... Mean, it's, it's, oh, I'm sorry, go, no, go, Gary. No, no, go, go ahead. ahead. I was, I was, I was, I was going to say, because otherwise, what's the fucking point? exactly <laughs> like exactly. i mean i mean just crap i mean he beat he beat okada yeah clean yeah and i'm not that's not to imply other times tama has won has been dirty like you know that's there's no implication sometimes, I'm not incriminating he's a, anybody he, he's a wrestler sometimes right. he's won clean sometimes he's won dirty the important this part is he's won in, it's not admissible in bullet club court or whatever i'm not i'm not gonna put words in <laughs> thomas mouth but i think the important thing is he won he um, won clean and he's yeah. gonna fucking do it again but also if he, if he has to win dirty he should win anyway i don't care I, that's what that's what i'm saying <laughs> i think that's that's why that's why i keep saying he beat okada clean and i hope he beats okada clean again but man don't be afraid of that dick kick you're great at kicking people in the dick don't don't run from your strengths you can do just it. because you're trying because i think he has proven everything that he needed to prove in this g1 and now he can go back to being the uh the shit stir that he is but let's stir the shit let's get to the the final match of power struggle we will thank you all for listening to the super sized edition of thomas island once we got on a roll i decided we had to just keep going shingo takagi versus zach saber jr sabers beaten takagi before he's looking to do it again the world title is in such flux at the moment that i i think he could do it i'm not entirely sure the Takagi is safe. I'm going to throw it Gary first. What do you think? I think Shingo's got this, honestly. Okay. I just, I just can't see Zach beating him again. I yeah. just can't. That's fair. That's very, I mean, especially since Sabre has a lot on his plate with the world tag league coming up, he is still tag champion. And so, uh, as in, um, yes, while Tai Chi is injured, that does mean that he has some time to be a single star, but he, he does have very, he, he might be a little divided mentally. I don't know. You bring up a good point. Uh, John, what do you think? I think Shingo's ready for this shit. Okay. Uh, I think he's defending here. He's, uh, he's Kevin McAllister and he yeah. knows, he knows the wet bandits are coming and he's setting up fucking traps. Yep. I think, I think he, I think he's ready for it. Zach Sabres is coming in here to challenge. Mm -hmm. doesn't seem overly prepared for it well you know, it, he's been he's other he's had other things to concentrate on i guess he's had other things to concentrate and it and it is you know there is that perfunctory feel to the fact that well he beat him in the g1 so he's got to wrestle him for the title that's just the way that's the way the g1 works yeah and i i want to sit here and be the, the 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 third man in the wilderness going look i think saber's gonna do it saber beat him before he can do it again 
but you bring up a very good point. Shingo Takagi has been carrying the company on his back since Will Osprey got injured. Yeah. And he's and another blood and he's another blood O brother, by the way. Oh, he's and like, okay. Well that, the blood that's blood brothers. We're no, for, uh, then then look i would never i would never try to get you uh i would never try to, to get you to separate from another member of the o gang yeah. um of the o block shout out to chicago's <laughs> o block um but it, it i i would not uh i i really think that this is not a case of carrying a company is making him crack i really think it's made him stronger i think it has made him a better wrestler i think it has made him more confident because like Look, maybe he was supposed to be world champion at some point this year, but Will Osprey got injured, and so I I have a feeling that Shingo Takagi is in a situation where he he was not expecting to be world champion, he was not expecting to carry the company the way that he has, and now that he has, I think you got to carry it all the way to Wrestle Kingdom, or else you didn't carry it at all. He's a he's a piece of coal under pressure. Yep, and that pressure has turned him into a motherfucking diamond. Yeah, and I and. Think he's and look, I get there are a lot of Dragon Gate heads that are going to yell at me because he's always been a diamond. Have you not watched? Oh, all I just, of the... But I just mean in this context. Exactly. Yeah. No, and, and exactly. And I'm no, I'm with yeah. you. I also believe that he is a he's a lump of coal being turned into a diamond right now. Uh, I, I think there's, he's there's a difference between everything and that's been done and then like becoming like a company man in a way yes. that, there... you know, you, they, well, they, he, he's gonna have his own curry someday you know or what here's you know? here's what i'll compare it to it's like when seth rollins finally became wwe champion and everyone was like well yeah he was great in roh why don't you guys watch it's like i it's not it's not the it's not the 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 main product you know like he is well, now there's a, difference there's a difference between care there's a difference between being a star in dragon gate and carrying new japan pro wrestling into their 50th year of operation a, a major through, corporation who has through, to see literal money value in you well well bushi road is the corporation let's let, let's well, you know right 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 but i'm saying but i'm saying is that is that for for you to be put in the spotlight yes in a major company and be and be given all these opportunities that means they see the opportunity that they could put you out in public uh mm -hmm. on a red carpet somewhere and people go oh shit it's shingo like we fucking yep. love shingo you know as, yep. as opposed to i mean being an roh champion fantastic love it you're gonna well, be dragon and, by, or dragon gate and, or whatever and hell and, and in fact dragon gate has made leaps and bounds since shingo was was running around because like especially now that they've got the noah partnership and they're uh they're they're kind of boosted up a little bit more like both of those both shingo and dragon gate i think are doing far better now than they were back when they were together not that it wasn't a great product not that it wasn't you know the matches were great it was it was very good i'm just saying that what's happening now is special what's happening now is is Beautiful. very big especially because like look new japan has weathered the storm throughout the pandemic pro wrestling noah has gotten better over the pandemic they've even invested now in some real fancy cameras and so they they are on a hell of an upswing. Like I said, Dragon Gate. Oh no, DDT is the one that has the Noah partnership. I'm so sorry. Let me get that. Let me get that straight. Dragon Gate is just kind of popping off on their own right now, doing very well. Meanwhile, DDT is popping up with the uh, the Noah partnership. You've got uh, all Japan is is pub is bubbling back up, especially now that they've got a little bit of a partnership with MLW. Um, and so, like, it does feel like the Japanese wrestling scene is a little healthier than it was in the 2010s when you had new japan running roughshod you had pro wrestling noah not doing great all japan also not doing great now everyone seems to be seems to be coming back to it it's a very exciting time in wrestling which means it's a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan we are coming up at almost an hour and a half so i oh, i oh. have to and we've we've talked power struggle we've talked roh we've talked everything that we could talk about all that's left to do is send people where they can find you gary where can people find you online if you want them to find you you can find me at switchblade underscore gt on all social media there you go switchblade underscore gt and john where can people find you if you want them to find you i always have all to right. add that come at me we'll talk about jrr martin <laughs> uh <laughs> we'll talk about all my bad takes uh at john sebastian j-o-h-n s-e-b-a-s-t-i-a-n on all stuff although my instagram is mostly baby pictures and booze but uh, you can also go linktree.com slash John Sebastian and find some more crap there. Hell yeah. Hell, and and I, sh I should mention, no, if you listen back to this podcast, notice the fact that in the whole JRR 
um, <laughs> whatever thing we, we went through. At no point did I actually try to say the name of the author of Game of Thrones Bless because him. I'm like, I'm going to screw it up to HBO. Let, it was written by HBO. Everybody knows it was, it was written by David Benioff and uh, uh, the other guy. I don't <laughs> I don't actually know that. I don't know their names because they disappeared when Game of Thrones listen, ended. This, I don't want to wrestle like podcast. Go, go listen to the I game know, of, game but of I'm podcast a, if you have to. I watch <laughs> too much media. I've been inside for a year. If you if you if you want me to stop talking about Game of Thrones, go get your vaccination, wear your mask and this pandemic so I can go the hell outside more. Oh uh, the, the, the daily or, or, walk I'm taking is not enough. I watched Heaven's Gate last night. That's how much free time I have. Let me out. All right. Sorry. Enough ranting. How about like you, Ross? Where, where can we find you? At Ross W. Berman IV on Twitter. Ross Berman.bandcamp.com. I just released an album on Friday. I think it's good. Go listen to it. You can tell me if you like it. You can tell me if you hate it. Either way, I get the listens. Um, but yeah, Ross Berman.bandcamp. At Ross W. Berman IV on Twitter. Ross Berman IV on Instagram. And I will be doing all the power struggle coverage over at WrestleZone.com as well as the Best of Super Juniors, World Tag League, New Japan Strong. If it's on WrestleZone and it's New Japan, I'm usually on it unless unless one of the other guys grabs it during aggregation. Shout out to the whole WrestleZone crew that has grabbed uh, some stories when I'm either asleep or on my walk. Uh, but thank you all for listening. Shout out to everyone that uh, subscribes to the Twitch and was hanging out in the chat. Shout out to all the subscribers over at patreon.com backslash Thomas Island. It's a new month. So if you want to head on over to Thomas Island's Patreon and subscribe to that Islander tier and start getting in on the happy hours, chop it up the way that we've been chopping it up on the podcast every week, subscribe to that Islander tier. It's a good ass time. Uh, Tama is obviously traveling, but he will be back next week at uh, Tama underscore Tonga on Twitter at the good bad guy Tama Tonga on Instagram, Thomas Island on Instagram and Twitter for all of your podcast needs. Folks, thank you so much. I'm going to go not talk for like a week because this has been uh, this has been a marathon. Thank you again, John. Thank you again, Gary. Thank you all for listening. We will see you next week. Thank you for listening to this week's Thomas Island. Find more great Thomas Island content like the Shotgun series, weekly happy hour Zoom calls with Tama, video versions of the podcast, and much, much more at patreon.com forward slash Thomas Island and visit at Thomas Island on Instagram and Twitter.